thought of this before. It just, it just rang true with me. It, was, it just made sense. Trees, like sediment cores and ice cores, preserve valuable climate data. During warmer years, trees grow fast, adding thick rings. During cool years, growth is slow and rings are thin. If Burkle's theory is true, the trees of Stradivari's time possessed much more than information about the frigid weather. And so I obtained tree ring data from uh, the Alps in Europe, and we analyzed the tree ring data, and we did indeed find that the Little Ice Age, and especially the Maunder Minimum period, was characterized by extremely slow growth. In fact, the slowest growth in the trees during the last 500 to 600, even 700 years or so. Trees that grow slower will have different wood density from trees that grow much faster. And in many ways, keep in mind that the resonance of the wood depends on the widths of the rings themselves. I mean, the widths, the cells that form the individual rings act much like sound chambers, as a matter of fact. So this would seem to support the hypothesis that the widths of the rings might have contributed to the superior sound quality of musical instruments made at the time. Burkle and Grissino Mayer believe that the Stradivarius may owe its magic not just to when the trees grew, but where. The trees of the Italian Alps were rooted in poor soil at high altitude, conditions that promoted slow, dense growth even under a normal sun. The wood in the trunks of the trees from which Stradivari made his violins may have possessed superior properties of resonance that the Maunder Minimum enhanced. Did the Little Ice Age give Stradivari a crucial assist in creating this superior sound? Some experts say no. They say that some of the renowned violins have wide tree rings and that violins made with the same wood by other craftsmen of the same era were mediocre. Nonetheless, Burkle's and Grissino Mayer's intriguing theory has focused new attention on music's most enduring mystery. Music lovers aren't the only ones who may owe a toast to the Little Ice Age. America's beer and hard liquor drinkers may too. Beer and hard liquor account for 93% of all alcoholic beverages consumed in the United States. If not for the Little Ice Age, these party animals might all be drinking wine instead. The backstory to America's drinking